तो हमें स्टार्ट मत करना अभी वो ढूंढना पड़ेगा ना ये भी कह गया क्यों वो खुल वो नहीं दिखा रहा भैया यूट्यूब पे अभी है सेवन्थ का तो आ गया था बराबर एट्थ का तो फिर लिंक दे दो लेक्चर टू है लिखा हुआ ये तो साइंस में क्यों दिखा रहा है सब्जेक्ट चेंज करना पड़ेगा इसका इंग्लिश में आने साइंस में दिखा रहा है ये ठीक है ना हाँ तो क्या उनको गिरधारी भैया को बोलना पड़ेगा क्यों साइंस दिखा रहा है नहीं नहीं अभी तो ठीक है मतलब बोलना पड़ेगा ठीक हाँ चालू नहीं किया ना अभी कर दिया हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम बैक टू योर classes english live classes for class 8 yesterday we had a very short view about the syllabus of your syllabus of class 8 prescribed with two books english reader and supplementary reader and you uh, we have discussed about the number of chapters and poem later on we discussed about the important dates given before the chapter you read we discussed what do they remind us and how they are associated with the theme of the chapter then we have all discussed the introduction of the chapter and later on the explanation part began so we will continue that explanation part today during the explanation if you have any doubt any query after the completion of one slide or paragraph when i will remind you you may ask your doubts i'll give you solutions for your doubts i will try to clear your queries there so let's continue the explanation part we discussed word meanings yesterday then we discussed this activity we have seen what is given in the chapter so what is given there we will see here let's recall the part we discussed we saw the story is set in the war field with the uh, drawback of or with the background of christmas celebration here the story is given in a narrative way the narrator is uh, telling talking to the reader it is said in the beginning of the chapter once narrator went to the junk shop the shop which sells the inexpensive antique pieces or damaged pieces damaged furniture we can say and his attention was grabbed by one roll top desk which was in a damaged condition veneer was removed from the corners and one leg was cl clumsily fitted and it had scorch marks and even it was clear that the water affected on it means due to rain or something but as it was a long wish for of the narrator to had to have such type of roll top desk with him he decided to purchase it and uh, mend it he brought it at home took it to the room work room behind the garage and he started working he first removed the upward board of the desk roll top board and he tried to remove the drawers from the that frame of the desk so that he could mend the remaining body of the desk few of the drawers removed or were freed from the desk easily but uh, last drawer of the desk was fixed in it narrator 
worked hard he pulled it with force and all even he hit it he hit it with the fist finally it suddenly released it suddenly removed or suddenly came out of the frame of the desk and to the narrator's surprise he found one secret place in that drawer inside that drawer and he was more surprised to see a tin box a small black tin box stapled with or uh, uh, attached with a printed paper there note uh, roll paper there having lined paper there and it was written on the letter that it was james last letter to be buried with the person who was the earlier owner of the desk when the person would die these words were written in a shaky handwriting with pencil and narrator was curious to know what was there in that letter that made the person wish to wish to have that letter with him at the time of or even after the death so narrator opened that one though his conscience was denying him though he knew it was a bad manner to read someone else personal letter but he could not hold his curiosity and he finally decided to read it and unfolded that letter there was a, when he opened that tin box there was a envelope on the envelope one address was written that we discussed yesterday miss jane macpherson 12 copper beaches bridport dorset and the date was mentioned there december 26 1914 that i made you clear the time when world war 1 began and the next day of christmas so what further the letter about who had written it that we'll discuss today we will try to feel the emotions of the person who wrote that letter that is the main soul of the story we can see and surely it will appeal your feelings it will appeal the feeling of humanity so i hope this part which we discussed yesterday there was no doubt let's start today let's begin the class today again and when you have even you are asked to share your doubts and uh, queries let me know so that we can make the chapters very smooth and very clear to you and you can feel confident to learn it to prepare it for exam so let's see what is given here you have your comprehension check after this part so these two simple questions will make you clear whether you understood this part of the story or not this section first of the story or not so the first question which is asked here what did the author find in a junk shop what did the author find in a junk shop so let's try to answer this question as you have question with supporting verb did wait a minute will work with that let's come on the slide again so here the question is what did the author find in a junk shop you have a supporting verb here did that means you need to answer the question in past tense so you can start your answer with the you can start your answer from the words of the question the author find so here the you can make capital it will start with the capital the t sorry so the author as we are writing answer in past tense that find will become found the author found a roll top desk roll top desk in a junk shop and after that you have to give full stop so in this way with the help of the question you can easily make the answer you can easily frame the answer so what was the question what did the author find in a junk shop as you are eighth class students it is too easy for you to frame small answers so the answer is the author found a roll top desk in a junk shop 
Now let's discuss second question. What did he find in a secret drawer? There are two questions combined together in this question. So try to answer this question. I'll wait for your answers. What did he find in a secret drawer? You have time? Give your answers. If you understand the story, give your answers. We'll see. Here if you can give answers, it will be easy. And you will be also clear that you have no doubt about it. Okay, uh, at present there are no answers, no issue. I'll only give you the correct answer. What did he find in a secret drawer? Again, the question is asked using did. That means, see, story is based in a past. Excuse me. See, the story is based on the past action. So the questions are given with the deed. So you have to write answers with past tense. So what did he find in a secret drawer? So again, we'll start our answer from the word with the word from the question only that is he. So this H will become capital. You can write it like this he. Again, the verb find will change into past form found. So what did he found? He found a letter. Sorry, he found a small tin box, a small black tin box, cello taped with a lined paper, with a lined paper. So this answer you can easily find as it is in your textbook also when you will see page number 10 here the part from section 1 there you have 6th line, 7th line where it is written a small black tin box cello tape to the top of it was with a lined paper, like notebook paper or note paper. So I hope this answer is very clear and if you are able to answer these two questions means the part of the story is very clear to you, there is no doubt and we can move ahead. So let's move for the next part of explanation. Here section 2 of the story starts. What is given here? Now this is the beginning of the letter. This letter is exactly given in the book as it is. So now you are coming to the another part of the story. We are enjoying or we are going to experience the words from the letter. The letter written by Jim McPherson to his dearest, his beloved wife Connie McPherson. So in the beginning you have the address. The writer is addressing the sender, uh, receiver. Dearest Connie, Connie, Connie McPherson, she was beloved wife of Jim McPherson, the person from Britain, from England, who was the part of troop on the war ground of World War I. That setting is taken here. I write to you in a much happier frame of mind because something wonderful had just happened that I must tell you about at once. So Jim is addressing his wife Connie. And how does he start his letter? How did he start his letter? He said, I write to you in a much happier frame of mind. I am so happy. I am so excited. I am feeling so glad so joyful that I could not hold myself, I cannot hold myself sharing this information with you. So here the excitement, the joy, the extreme feeling of experiencing, enjoying something unusual made Jim so impassionate that he could not wait for long 
and very next day he sent a letter he wrote a letter to his wife we were all standing to in our trenches yesterday morning christmas morning so the incident shared in the letter by jim macpherson took place on the day of christmas on 25th of december 1914 so the incident took place in this letter was on 25th 25th december 1914 world war 1 it began in july 1914 6 months the war continued so you can understand the soldier was feeling happy on the battleground means what you have to understand his feelings we were all standing to in our trenches trenches we discussed that deep narrow patches dug in the ground for the soldiers to hide as i gave you examples from the movies of bhuj or uh, border or search war movies that one uh, in hindi it is called bunkers so these places soldiers used to hide themselves from the attacks of enemies so jim macpherson says that he and his other troop members were present they were standing in trenches as the soldiers used to do as i have ever seen what is it uh sorry here will continue it was crisp and quiet all about as beautiful a morning as i have ever seen as cold and frosty as a christmas morning should be so here he is describing in these lines jim described the morning of christmas 25th december 1914 so how was it it was crisp and quiet silence was peaceful silence was there pleasant atmosphere because somewhere though the soldiers were on the battleground war field but they knew it was christmas so they were trying to recall their family they were actually missing their family and recalling the good time which they had with their family previous christmas so obviously because of that mood might be jim uh, felt the morning was very peaceful very quiet and beautiful morning it was i have ever seen according to jim he had never experienced such a beautiful and peaceful morning earlier before that as cold and frosty as christmas morning should be we know england eastern country christmas falls in winter season an extreme winter is experienced during that time everywhere snow fall and frosty and chilling cold there so the expected weather was experienced by jim as it was always ex- uh, expecting on christmas eve or christmas time this passage is over if you have any doubt related to the description of the beginning of the letter or the words they used here the excitement the joy the feeling of the soldier of jim macpherson you may ask questions i'll solve your problems i'll give i solve your queries so let me know if you have any problem there so at present uh i am not getting any query here let's wait for some time we will go through the next paragraph on the slide afterwards may possible the students will clear their doubts one more time i'll see if something is flashing on my screen okay nothing is there at present it is not there so let's continue the explanation i should like to be able to tell you that we began it now take this sentence very carefully and try to understand here some joy of surprised getting surprised 
excitement at the same time little regret is expressed by a soldier by jim what regret was there i should like to be able to tell you that we began it whatever happened with us yesterday whatever took place or whatever experience jim had on a previous day on christmas he actually felt regret that why they were the jim and his troop members were not to take a credit of taking initiative for that incident whatever took place on that battlefield whatever amazing jim experience there he wished if he was the one or his people were the one to take that initiative i hope it is very clear to you now somewhere jim felt bad that he or his people were not to take that good initiative to start that good thing which they experienced previous day but the truth i am ashamed to say see i told you he was feeling guilt he had a guilt he was feeling regret why he was feeling sorry that's why it is in i am ashamed to say i really feel bad to say that that is the truth the reality is that frieds began it frieds we have already discussed that the frieds is a very common name in germany that's why the germans are addressed in this story german soldiers are addressed in this story as frieds so jim macpherson tell uh, told his wife jim uh, conny that frieds were the soldiers who took initiative to start that unexpected unbelievable experience action first someone saw a white flag waving from the trenches opposite so as this tommy's british army had prepared trenches to save their to protect their soldiers the same way obviously the opposite team opposite army up that uh, enemies had the trenches to save to protect their soldiers someone from this tommy's troop noticed saw that one frieds or from the trenches of the german army one white flag was waving there white color symbolizes peace to give a pause to war so one of the german soldier some one of the german soldier frieds was waving a white flag from their trenches which was noticed by british army it made clear to britishers to these british army people soldiers that they wanted to say something they wanted to come ahead to say something and requesting not to attack on german on german soldiers then they were calling out to us from across no man's land happy christmas tommy happy christmas no man's land we you know all the countries have set their borders this much area indian border american border pakistani border chinese border whatever they are and between the borders of two countries those who are together those who are actually connected naturally there is some open space which was not under any countries possession no one country means that place where the war was going on between the frieds and the tommies the armies had their positions between the places of their position there was a piece of land vacant piece of land and no one of the no one neither of the troop could show their possession their ownership on that land it was free from both the troops both the armies no one german could say that it was there or no one britishers or that uh, tommies they could say it was there so that is called no man's land so 
from opposite troop from enemy's troop from the germans soldiers troop someone shouted and wished happy christmas to tommy's means this british soldiers as we discussed it was christmas 25th december 1914 when this incident took place according to the story enemies were greeting merry christmas happy christmas to opposite troop opponents there when we had got over the surprise some of us shouted back same to you fred same to you jim was shocked jim was actually officer one of the officer of that troop of tommy's troop of british army he was shocked how the enemies on that severe in that severe condition when world war began when the people were just taking others as their enemies how could one wish merry christmas how could one wish something good for others and that is also for enemies and before jim and other soldiers of his troop come out of that shocking incident suddenly from jim's troop suddenly from the british army someone replied positively to german soldiers to fritz saying same to you fritz same to you it means for they wished them happy christmas too i thought that would be that jim thought that would be that means it is going to end okay it happens sometimes that christmas and they similarly both the troops were missing their family and that's why they wished each other merry christmas or happy christmas jim thought it will over there only it would over there only there would be no further such unexpected things would take place wishing each other over and again they would start their war as it was the morning time means again they could start the they could continue the previous fight that was expected by jim or might be same other troop members of jim also then what happened we all did it means all the soldiers from british army they were thought they were thinking okay they wished us we wished them over here only it will end and again we'll continue the war but then suddenly one of them was up there in his gray great coat and waving a white flag great gray great great coats are the coats actually it was a winter season they were heavy long overcoats used by the soldiers to protect them from severe cold on the battlefield so when the tommies british soldiers were expecting to end that good wishes after replying after their reply, reply suddenly they saw one of the freeds one of the german soldier, soldier in a gray great coat stood from the trenches and started waving white flag earlier they were hidden and they just showed white flag to send a message of peace to tell that for some time they want peace but later on one enemy stood and started waving the white flag was really shocking don't shoot lads someone shouted lad young boy young men we can say so like uh in army based movies you have seen the officers call them boys listen it like that so one of the person from british army suddenly said don't shoot stop because on the war field it happens any of the soldier tries to come out of trench to shift from one place to another suddenly the enemy would shot or fire and they would try to reduce the number of their enemies so might possible when one german soldier stood and waved white flag britishers thought any of them could fire could shot the soldier german soldier so suddenly someone told the other soldiers not to do that 
it was not jim though he was the officer but he didn't order for that someone else ordered british army british soldiers not to fire not to kill that german soldier and no one did so as soon as the order given no one tried to shot the gun then there was another freeze up on the parapet parapet it's a low boundary wall we can say along with the tall building so freeds came on that boundary wall first that one freeds one german soldier with white flag then another german soldier stood then another one after another many german soldiers started coming out of their trenches it was actually a very brave move they had they waved a flag expecting the tommies not to fire them not to kill them not to attack on them and they knew that soldiers are very disciplined and they understand the dignity of these commands so tommies also didn't they respected that white flag and they didn't uh, attack on the germans seeing the germans were were coming themselves to get killed tommies also didn't shot or didn't fire towards them at them then one after another many german soldiers many freeds started coming out of their trenches from their hidden places hiding places i told the man it's a trick but it wasn't jim had a doubt he was officer he was responsible for the lives of his soldiers so somewhere he was doubtful because it was quite obvious no one can uh, experience or no one can actually expect something good on the battlefield something uh, kind to take uh, take place on the battlefield so the same was with jim jim thought it might be trick of the enemies might they were playing some game conspiracy they would pretend to uh, ask for peace and uh, suddenly they would attack on tommies so jim thought jim scared he had a doubt that it might be a trick played by germans by freeds but it wasn't but there was no trick played by germans they actually wanted some peaceful time to spend together with tommies so here this another paragraph completed if you have doubt please ask let me know so actually the communication is disturbed between you and me so there is no way at present i can see your doubts expecting you all people getting it easily i'll revise it once in short and then you can uh, clear your doubts with that revision part revision discussion and then you can we can start we can continue let's see what is there if you'll come to know okay so let's see what is given here we have seen the beginning of the letter where jim seems very excited surprised and he was in such a good mood that he could not hold himself by share from sharing the experience he had on the battlefield with his wife and that's why he had addressed he wrote that letter to his wife and he told her previous day that was christmas day was very pleasant cold the weather was uh, very cold chilling frosty as it is expected on the christmas then something he told that they all were their soldiers tommies were in their trenches and suddenly they found a white flag waved by germans by freeds first they had a doubt then suddenly they heard the wishes from freeds german soldiers for christmas they wished happy christmas to tommies to british soldiers 
in reply british soldiers wished them happy christmas jim was expecting that it would over there only then they would start the fight again the war again but to his surprise again the man the german soldier came out of trenches waving white flag the british soldiers were ordered not to fire and one after another many freeds many german soldiers came out of their trenches being an officer jim was little worried he thought it might be a trick by german soldiers to trap the britishers to kill britishers but to his surprise there was no such trick played so i hope you understood this the explanation is very clear to you now here we come to the point of the story we are curiosity generates we feel very curious very excited to know what happens further if the germans were not ready to attack if the germans had no trick played against britishers if they didn't want to attack on them though world war was going on as we considered it as the setting of the story what actually they intended to do what actually these german soldiers wanted to do why were they waving the white flag did they want to quit the fight did they want to give up surrender or something else unplanned unexpected was about to take place with jim so that will discuss in our continuing lecture tomorrow so get ready for the online lecture be on time we will discuss if at present you don't have doubts to share read this chapter after the class find it yourself uh, with the meaning of the words or the text and after that if you feel feel that there are some queries or doubts in next class you can sure there is no issue so surely we will solve the queries we will discuss your problems and then we will move ahead and you will find yourself ready with this chapter for your exam preparation so keep preparing keep studying go through the chapter and start preparing from now only to prepare for exam get ready for exam get ready for the class tomorrow we'll be together till then thank you have a nice day keep studying